This is Seven National News and in our top story. The UAE Vice President, Prime Minister and ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, has directed the Ministry of Education, School Zones and Educational Leaders nationwide to foster a culture of integration, cooperation and dialogue. The ruler of Dubai added that this cooperation will ensure the development of the educational process as well as benefit from the national experience in planning and evaluation in order to prepare innovative generations that are equipped with 21st century tools. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed made his remarks during his visit to the ministry where he was briefed about the preparations made for the new academic year in addition to an interim report of important achievements related to the development of the Educational Plan 2015-21. Present at the meeting were Minister for the Cabinet Affairs, His Excellency Mohammed Abdullah al gargawi as well as the Minister of Education, His Excellency Hussein Ibrahim al-Hamadi. His Highness was briefed about the expansion of the Sheikh Mohammed Smart Education Programme over the last three years, with officials revealing that the number of schools implementing the programme has jumped to 146 compared to 123 schools last year. The programme will expand to cover 208 schools this academic year. Registration of candidates who intend to run for the federal national elections this year will start on Sunday, August 16, and will take place for five days until the 20th of August, and registration centres that have been set up by the National Election Committee across the UAE. The registration centres in the Emirate of Abu Dhabi will be located at the Abu Dhabi Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Hazar bin Zayed Stadium in Al Ain, and Bainuna Institute of Science and Technology in the Western Region. Dubai will have a registration center at the Dubai World Trade Center, while in Sharjah it will be located in the office of the Advisory Council of the Emirate of Sharjah. The Ras Al Khaimah Center will operate in the Ministry of Culture, Youth and Community Development Building. The Um Al Quain Center will be in the office of the Executive Council of the Emirate, while the Fujairah Center will be located in the Fujairah Chamber of Commerce and Industry Building. The registration center in Ajman will be based at the Humaid bin Rashid Hall in Ajman Museum. The center will be open for registration from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. According to a media release by the NEC, each member of the Electoral College has the right to run for the elections if they are a citizen residing permanently in one of the Emirates aged not less than 25 years, have good character and reputation, not have been convicted for any offence and should be literate. As per the procedure set by the NEC, potential candidates can submit the nomination to contest for the elections either in person or through a representative to the Emirates Committee of their respective Emirate. According to the timetable for elections of the Federal National Council, the NEC will declare the preliminary list of candidates on the 23rd of August and announce the final list on August 31. The UAE ranks number one in the Arab world in the empowerment of women for the year 2014. That's according to the Arab Women Foundation. In its annual report for 2014 on the reality of the participation of Arab women in decision-making bodies, governments, parliaments and parliamentary elections in Arab countries, the foundation expressed its appreciation to the UAE for pursuing policies of women empowerment. According to the report, statistics show that women constitute 22% of the membership of the Federal National Council, which is the highest proportion of female participation among Arab countries for the third year in a row. The report added that the number of women ministers has also increased from two to four, with the UAE steadily making progress for the participation of women, especially in areas such as the judiciary, the diplomatic corps and the increasing number of women involved in business. In a statement, Dr. Suad Suleiman, the media advisor for the Arab Women Foundation, praised the initiatives of a number of Arab countries in seeking and following policies that enhance women's participation in various fields. With the aim of protecting the infrastructure of the rail network in Dubai, the Roads and Transport Authority has carried out 
2,839 inspections to detect any violations relating to rail right-of-way during the first six months of this year. According to the authority, an inspection selection has been set up within the structure of the Rail Right-of-Way Department to carry out the 24-7 inspections. The team has been looking at work related to projects within protected areas of the rail facilities to ensure that the conditions of NOCs issued by the RTA to contractors are adhered to. With a focus on hazardous projects which could potentially cause damage to rail infrastructure, inspection operations conducted during the first six months of this year resulted in the reporting of 95 offences for vehicles parking in prohibited places under the Metro viaducts. In addition, the RTA reported that about 126 cases of legal notices and fines were issued. The RTA is calling on all contractors and consultants to obtain the proper NOCs before the commencement of any works undertaken within the rail protected areas in order to safeguard the facilities and infrastructure of the rail network. A system to certify and develop lifeguard skills has been launched to improve standards, make swimming areas safer and help save lives. The Abu Dhabi Quality and Conformity Council introduced the scheme to increase the number of trained lifeguards and to reduce the number of water-related tragedies. According to a local report, drowning is the primary cause of accidental deaths, accounting for almost 400,000 cases annually worldwide. The new system, according to officials from the QCC, will enhance the skills of lifeguards and contribute to ensuring the safety of people who use pools and beaches in Abu Dhabi. At the moment, the scheme is voluntary and lifeguards can apply to take the practical exam with successful candidates accredited in pool rescue and first aid techniques. According to the report, officials from the hotel and resort industries have welcomed the scheme and a single standard for swimming pool and beach lifeguards. The Emirates Foundation has announced that Think Science Fair investors will provide advisory support to young, talented Emirati scientists who want to enhance their scientific, scientific skills while also contributing in the field of science and technology. The CEO of the Emirates Foundation, Claire Woodcraft Scott, was quoted in a newspaper as saying that 27 selected project winners of the Think Science Fair held in the month of May this year will receive mentoring and training as well as a platform to learn and enhance their scientific knowledge and skills. The CEO stated that the foundation is partnering with the public and private sectors to offer additional technical support to talented scientists with little resources. The CEO added that the foundation has immense confidence in the projects prepared by the young Emirati scientists and it is hopeful that the project selected for incubation will go on to have a positive impact on the scientific sector in the UAE and beyond. It was revealed that Think Science investors will help transform the ideas of young Emirati scientists by changing their prototypes into models that have real-life real industrial and commercial applications. Think Science program was launched in 2012 as part of the Emirates Foundation for Youth Development's efforts to inspire and encourage Emirati youth to embrace careers in science. And finally, in the bulletin. The Dubai Aquarium has added a few new friends to the thousands of fish already present in the 10 million litre aquarium. To complement the existing more than 200 species of fish and other marine life that already call the aquarium home, a group of new Caribbean sharks have been added into the mix of sharks and rays. The smallest members in the hammerhead shark family, the bonnethead or shovelhead sharks from the Caribbean seas, average around 30 to 50 inches in length and weigh up to 24 pounds. They are usually seen at estuaries, shallow bays, sand flats and coral reef habitats, according to aquarium officials, who added that with the addition of the new species, they will be holding information sessions for visitors. During these sessions, visitors will be able to learn from aquarium marine specialists about how the sharks communicate with each other, such as by hunching their backs, head shaking, jaw snapping and circling in follow the leader style groups, as well as other interesting facts about these sharks.